afternoon, golf fans. I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for RollerPros.com to bring you my weekly DFS PGA preview and picks. Uh, before getting in, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to get over to the site, rotopros.com slash sign up, and you can get your free 30-day trial we got going on right now. Check out everything that we've got. Um, after that, you can sign up for a monthly or yearly subscription. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, uh, Premier League, Champions League, MLB, NASCAR, pretty much anything that you want to play DFS sports for, we cover. So not only does the subscription give you access to all of our articles, but it also gives you access to our community chat um, in the slack chat we've got different channels set up this is the pga one that we're going to be uh, looking at today throughout the week and leading up to lineup locks this is where i'm going to be in there answering questions this is where i'm going to be providing stats throughout the week um, trends leading up to the tournament that sort of stuff um, very ex uh, very good place to go if you've got questions uh, even on strategy lineup construction that sort of stuff and then of course like i said we cover all those other sports we have industry compliant skeleton lineups that we share in this chat as well it kind of gives you a look at our core in our lineups and then you got to go ahead and fill out the rest of the lineup and uh, that's where our experts are going to be in there to help you uh, um, you know answer any questions and fill in those open spots so without further ado let's just jump right into this week um, i want to go over not only just my cheat sheet but i also want to have a look at and give a shout out to some of the places that i use for pulling in stats to my cheat sheet um, as long as play other places that I go and do my research um, each and every week. So first things first, um, start out with Mooseonomics. Um, that is Fantasy National Golf Club. So what we're going to do there, what I do every week is I go look at the, the event um, that's happening. I will go look at the course breakdown. This is just breaking down each and every hole, looking at the eagle rate, the birdie rate, the par rate, um, bogeys and that sort of thing. What's more important to me, um, I go down and one of the first places I'll start is look at the hole composition. Hole composition. See how many par fours, what the lengths are going to be of those holes, what the approach shot distribution is going to be each and every week. Kind of gives you an insight of what stats. Um, this really helps me start, come up with my model of what stats I'm going to be looking at each week. And then you can look at things like average strokes gained by hole, by par of the top 10 finishers. You can see par 5 scoring is going to be important this week. Um, there's only three par 5s, but there is heavy scoring on those holes, so you're going to have to be up there. Um, strokes gain approach, a little more important than strokes gain off the tee, you can tell. So that's just a really good place to go to start your research every week. And then another thing I do with Fantasy Nationals, I will go back and I will look at the Waste Management Phoenix Open from years past and just kind of get a feel for um, how the players played um, in those tournaments. Waste Management Phoenix Open 2018. We'll click on that. And it's going to, first of all, it's going to pop up. It's going to show us a leaderboard of that tournament. So we're just going to go have a look at that. While that's loading, um, the other place I go with that course breakdown is over to PGATour.com. Bring up that tournament. I will go to Tournament Info and I will bring up the course and I'll just kind of go through. Um, read a little bit about each hole and just kind of decide just from without statistical without looking at any of the statistics just kind of looking at um, what my eyes are telling me is going to be important this week so first of all you're kind of scrolling through looking at some of these holes what you can see is there's a fairly generous landing area on most of these holes in that 260 to 280 yard range um, most of the average hitters on tour are going to be able to uh, have no problems hitting the fairways the, the trouble comes in with the bunkers and this is you know some of the stuff that's kind of been brought in over the last few years is they've tightened it up a little bit just to make it a little bit harder on the tour players without taking away um, you know the diff the the difficulty making it more difficult for your for your average uh, player that's coming out here and play on this public course so what they've done is that your big landing areas for your big hitters like 290 to 310 kind of landing areas is they've got bunkers as you can kind of see here um, so for me this week, you know, I'm not really looking at, you know, if you're looking at strokes gain off the tee, I think you can go with either someone who is long and accurate or someone that's short, but also has good long irons. Um, someone that's going to hit the fairways. So strokes gain off the tee, not maybe as weighed as high as strokes gain approach for me this week. Definitely going to be looking at that strokes gain approach. The greens are very receptive and to kind of get a feel 
um, you kind of get into the back nine of this course and you start seeing a lot of water. There's no water in the front, a lot, you know, mostly, you know, the desert kind of course like that. But you get on the back nine and there is water on six of the holes. Um, as you can see here in hole 11, you can kind of look at the picture here. It's maybe hard to see on this screen, but there is water on six of the final nine holes. can make it a little bit more challenging. But looking at the last five years results, we see winning scores of minus 18, minus 17, 14, 15, and 16. So there's going to be some scoring here. Birdie or better percentage is definitely going to be up there. Um, par 4 scoring is there is 11 of, of the holes are par 4s. We'll have a quick look at the course here. Um, 11 of those holes are par 4s. But these par 5s, 558, um, hole 3, hole 13 is another 558 par 5. And then hole 15 is a 553 par five so they are you know they're they're not long par fives by any means there is a lot of scoring and we go look at um the tournament scoring stats over the last five years one thing we look at here there's only 33 percent of the par fives 34 percent of the overall birdies coming on those par fives we got to remember there's only three of those holes so as you can see here last year there's at least 150 birdies on each of those par fives as well as mixed in with some eagles. So I'll be looking at par 5 birdie or better percentage, not just par 5 scoring this week, to go along with my par 4 scoring. So on my cheat sheet, um, getting back here, this would not load, so I'm just going to try and bring this up here again. I'm having some trouble at the moment. But uh, yeah, back to the sheet here. I'm just kind of going and looking at the model. When you get to the cheat sheet, the model is over here in orange, and these are the numbers that represent how much weight I'm putting on each of these stats. So you can see I've got approach over off the tee, and then with that approach, I'm also combining proximity. I think that's very, you know, with receptive greens, a lot of guys are going to be getting um, the hitting greens in regulation, probably going to see that 70, 75% average uh, greens in regulation. So proximity is going to be key this week to get as close to the pin as possible um, to make as many birdies as possible. I've got par five scoring over par, par, sorry, par four scoring over par, par five birdie or better percentage. And then I've also got birdie, overall birdie or better percentage up there as well. I'm um, going to be important this week. So after breaking down the course, um, deciding what's important, I put the sheet together. And then once I do that, um, it, it looks like this. So then what you're going to see for anyone that's new to the sheet, we've got uh, DraftKings and FanDuel salaries. We've got odds. We've got the official world golf ranking of each player. Uh, DraftKings scoring the last 5 and 10. And the reason I don't have FanDuel up there, it's a lot easier to track. DraftKings wants to turn it over, load that data into a spreadsheet um, to easily share. FanDuel is not quite as easy doing that. That's something I'll be looking to in the future. So we're looking at DraftKings scoring last 5, last 10. So what you're going to notice here is that 5 and 10 are going to be the same because I load these points as of the start of um, this season with 2018-19 season, which was the Safeway Open. So for all these players, until we get more of a sample size, these two numbers are going to be the same. In my model, I'm looking at DraftKings last 5 average because when you scroll over, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, next up, we've got stats in the green. So we've got pretty much, you know, like 25 plus stats here that you can look at for each and every player. We've got strokes, gain stats, putting stats, off the tee, your approach stats, which is looking a lot at proximity in different ranges. We've got your scoring stats, par 3, 4, 5. Scoring average before the cut is something I'll look at uh, when deciding on cash game plays because that is your scoring average over the first two days. And then for upside, I'm starting looking a little bit more at round three and round four scoring averages. Who does good on the weekends, uh, closes out tournaments. We've got bogey avoidance, birdie or better percentage. And then we've got your around the green stats, your scrambling, and your sand save. Go over a little bit more. We've got course history in blue. This is the last five years. Now on most courses uh, or most weeks, there's going to be just one course used like this week. It was a little bit different the last two weeks. We've had multiple course rotations. Um, so this this course history is something I'm going to be paying a little bit more attention to this week, being that there is only one course. Um, so that is the last five years where they placed, and then the average um, of those last five appearances here as well. Then we've got current form in purple, so that is uh, where a player is placed over his last five events. Not the last five events on tour, but each individual player's last five events. Keep that in mind. That's this, um, when looking at your current form. And then DK and FanDuel odds differential, that's just something I look at. I'm ranking DraftKings, FanDuel salaries, and then the odds as well, and they're just kind of comparing them. So one thing that stands out right away um, that you can look at, and you can tell just by the coloration over here, is Byun Han An, 9200 on FanDuel. He's 40th in FanDuel pricing, but 20th in the odds. 
Um, so that gives him, you know, green here. That's a plus 20. That's a little bit of value on the FanDuel side of things, whereas he's 16th in DraftKings salary over here, which is a little bit of a minus four um, because he's 20th in odds. So that's just something I like to use to try and find some players that maybe stand out either on FanDuel or DraftKings make a better play over there. So definitely going to be looking at Bian Hun An on FanDuel this week because of that. Another one that stands out is Cameron Champ. He's going to be GPP only for me. You know, he's missed his last two cuts, but he has shown a ton of upside early in his career here. And being that he's 35th in FanDuel salary and 17th in odds makes him really stand out there as well. And then once you get over to the stats model here um, that I already talked about with these numbers above, this is just ranking each and every stat, each and every player in the field in each and every stats category here. So this is your raw stats. And then once you get over into the orange, this is their actual ranking in those categories. And that's how I can build a model um, around that. And then all the way over to the right, this just gives you your weight of the stats. So then we've got your rank of the stats model, course history model, form model, and then DraftKings points last five. So form and DraftKings points kind of go hand in hand. Uh, they're they're kind of the same, but you will find some players who have good form who maybe don't score as well uh, when it comes to DraftKings scoring. One that stands out there right now is Bubba Watson. He hasn't been scoring when it comes to DraftKings, but he is 33rd in the form model. So he has he's had some decent form. He just hasn't been scoring from a DraftKings perspective. That's just kind of one way I kind of look at those two. Another one here is... Uh, Matt Siama's got really good form and maybe not quite as good DraftKings scoring. Um, whether that means he's not making as many birdies, that's something I, I like to. If it point, if if a few of these places point out to that, I will maybe dig in a dig in a little bit further in that form and find out why he's not scoring, um, you know, as many fantasy points as he is doing good with form. He's getting those high finishes because there, you know, there is points on both sides for finishing position, but there's also points for you know, your birdies, your eagles, your streaks, and stuff like that. So that's something I'll dig into as well. And then over here in this column uh, labeled red, I don't have it. I'll just put that up here now, is your overall ranking. So that's putting everything together. 40% weight on stats, 30% on history, 30% on form. Puts that all together and gives you an overall ranking. So as you can see, number one this week is John Rahm. He's quite a bit ahead of anyone else. Um, just because he ranks sixth or better in all four categories. So that's something I look at too, someone that's good across all um, all four of these categories that I'm ranking in my overall model. So another one that stands out maybe at fifth here is Xander Schofley. He's top 20 in all of them. Um, same with Webb Simpson. He stands out in the model as well. Then we've got Ricky Fowler and down to Matt Kuchar. They all rank top 20 in all four categories in the sheet. Definitely, guys, that's why we see very top-heavy overall rankings right near the top of the salary this week. And then looking for some guys who are maybe good value plays, I'll just kind of scroll down and look at that overall ranking, uh, whether I'm over here in the far left or the far right, and find some guys that rank high in the model that are maybe down in the salary. A couple that stand out right away, Lucas Glover, I'll talk about him in a minute, JJ Spawn stands out. Going down even further, you can find some of those guys as well. So the overall ranking isn't perfect. And one thing um, I will I will just kind of warn you a little bit with the model right now um, in its current form is that players that don't have any form, stats, or course history automatically get defaulted to 150 here when it comes to that. So it may be a little bit of a false um, ranking there for them. Like Andrew Putnam has no course history over the last five years, so he automatically gets that rank of 150. That's going to bring his overall weighted rank down. Now, we're not going to notice that so much with the stats here this week because all these players have, pretty much all these players have stats. But as we get into, you know, some of the majors um, where you get a lot of the Euro European Tour players coming over and stuff like that, players making their first appearance of the season, not going to have any stats. They're automatically going to, like, we'll look at Martin Keimer here. He's at 112. He may not be 112 in the field when it comes to value. But because he doesn't have any stats in the PGA Tour, he automatically gets defaulted to that 150, which brings his overall ranking down. Um, as we get into the future here, a lot of the European Tour guys, I'm going to be bringing in their strokes gain stats and stuff so that we can compare and get a little bit closer of a model. But for now, this is just the way it works. So just keep in mind, if you see a player that, hey, why is he so low in your overall rankings? We'll just go have a quick look, and you can do it over here. Um, and if you see... 
any red over here, why is that? Why is he 120th in the stats model? Well, he doesn't have any stats on tour, that's why. So, I mean, you could manually um, go ahead and adjust that up a little bit. You know, maybe if he does, you start looking at the European Tour stats and he does fit a lot of the model. You could go bump that yourself and it's going to um, increase his rank a little bit. And then DraftKings points, like I said, last five events. So over the last five events that I've been looking at so far this season, he has not played, so he gets ranked near the back. Uh, we noticed that last week with Tiger Woods as well. He hadn't played um, since the Tour Championship, an official Tour event, so he didn't show up with any DraftKings points. So he was a little bit down in the model last week as well because of that. Now you can sort any of these columns. When you first download, it's going to be read only. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to File, make a copy, name it whatever you'd like here. I just leave it as copy of DFS PGA Sheet. Click OK. And when you do that, it's going to open up another copy of the sheet. You can erase the original one, or you can just X it off. Now what you can do is say you want to look at guys in ball striking, which is your approach plus off the tee. You go just in this column M here. Go up to data, sort Z to A because we want highest to lowest. And now uh, the field is sorted by um, approach plus off the tee, which is your strokes game ball striking. Now these stats in the sheet, they pull a little bit from last season as well as this season so I've kind of got it weighted about 50 50 right now that's going to change every week as we get a bigger sample size of those stats and you know by the time we get to um, you know the first major of the season um, somewhere in that range in in the late March uh, mid March somewhere in there April time um, the stats are going to be weighted more towards the current season I always like to leave a little bit on last season just in case you know you get some players in there um, that haven't played yet this year, they're still going to have stats that are going to show up. So keep that in mind when looking at the stats. If you're comparing to, say, like PGATour.com under, like, scoring or performance, and you see that the numbers don't really jive with what you see on here, it's because it's a mix of two seasons, whereas PGA Tour, they've got it uh, season by season on there. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to go back and sort by DraftKings dollar here and just go over and have a look. Something else you can do once you create your own copy of the sheet is you can go over here to the stats model, you can erase all these numbers, and you can put them in however you want. And by doing that, that's going to shake up this stats model ranking here. Um, you can also come over here into this area and say you think stats, okay, I don't really want to look at stats this week, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go 20 there. But I want to look heavily at course history this week. So you can build a model based, you know, you could even go up, you could erase all these all together. You could go in, you could say, okay, I want 80% course history and I want 20% form. That's the model I want this week. So as you can see, it changed things up a little bit. It put Matsuyama at one, Ram at, Ram at two. Um, so that will change things. So just keep that in mind. You can build your own models, whether you want to build your own stats model or you want to build your own model based on, you know, stats, history, form, and DraftKings scoring. Um, so that's how you do it. You just enter different numbers in here. As long as it still adds up to 100, it's going to produce a different overall ranking for you. I always like to use, and I keep it pretty simple each week, depending on um, what course we're at, 30% um, course history, and then usually 30% form, 20% on the actual form, and 10% on the DraftKings scoring over the last five events, because form is the last five events as well. I keep it pretty close to that, but I will... Um, go in and just like I just showed you 80% course history and just see how that shakes shakes things up when looking at it so I mean I can build a model on course history I can build a model on form I can build a model on just stats if I want um, and just kind of play around and see what works for you I guess so with that we're going to get into some of the picks one thing I want to get into first um, when building models I can build a model on here and like I said with these stats It's kind of looking at 50% of this year's stats So some players got five six events under the belt plus it's looking at 50% of the stats from last season So you got a lot larger sample size Sometimes what we want to do is just kind of see how a player is trending in a certain stat. That's where I turned to uh, Fantasy National Golf Club definitely get over there um, for the money that you pay it is the best site out there for researching stats. So first of all, you got a ton of filters, as you can see here on the left-hand side. we got the field. Right now, we are under DraftKings. If you play on FanDuel, just go up to Change Pricing, bring the drop-down menu in here, click on FanDuel, and it'll bring up FanDuel Pricing for you. I like to sort by last 24 rounds. That's just something I like to do. Um, you, like if You can search by 4, 8, 12, 24, all the way up to 100 rounds. Um, you can look at it that way. So I'm looking at the last 24 rounds, strokes gain stats. I don't have any filters in here. Say I want to see who is, I just sort by strokes gain approach. So as we've got 
Hideki Matsuyama, Justin Thomas, Gary Woodland, and so on, um, ranks the players in the field by stroke scan approach. Now with that, you can create custom models. So looking at, um, I got a model with my sheet that I'm gonna compare. Now I wanna look at how my players are doing in those stats um, over the last 24 rounds. So last 24 rounds, I'm gonna go up to add a column to your mixed condition model. I'm gonna select my stats, so I want stroke scan approach, and then you just label it. So I'm gonna do last 24, stroke screen approach overall add so this week i'm also looking at par 4 scoring so i'm going to go to par 4 efficiency under here it's going to bring up all the players par 4 efficiency over the last 24 rounds i'm going to first have a look sort by stroke screen par 4 you can see the players there again i'm going to add that to my mixed condition model i'm going to go up here i'm going to go stroke screen par 4 and i'm going to go last 24 stroke screen par 4 overall add to my model um, last thing I want to add in here is just birdies so I'm going to go to birdies here I'm going to go to birdie or better gained and I want to add that to my model as well birdie or better gained last 24 birdie or better gained overall and then one more thing I like to add just from a course history standpoint is I like to look at strokes gain total on that specific course so in the list of courses here we're going to scroll down and we're going to find TPC Scottsdale. Just scrolled over it here. There's TPC Scottsdale. Click off there. And it's the last 24 rounds on TPC Scottsdale we're looking at now. So I like to sort by strokes gain total. Kind of gives you an idea of who has the best course history here at that course, which is TPC Scottsdale this week. And I'm going to add that column as well. So we're going to look at strokes gain total. Last 24, strokes gained total, TPC Scottsdale add now that we've added some of the stats that we want to build a custom model around looking at the last 24 rounds we can just click on mixed condition model and this is what it looks like so this is where you're gonna put your weight so I'm gonna put say 40% on strokes gain approach uh, par 4 we're gonna go 20% birdie or better gain we're gonna go 30% and then we're gonna go 10% on course history we're gonna load that model and once it's done doing that, we can scroll down, we can sort by rank, and we can have a look at some of the players that show up in my custom model looking at the last 24 rounds. So as you can see, right there at the top, we got Taylor Gooch, 7,500 on DraftKings. He is fourth in this field in strokes gained approach over the last 24 rounds, third in birdie or better gained, fourth in strokes gained par four, and he doesn't have any course history here, so that's why it's black here. Um, so you can sort by that. This is a good way to compare this model to my overall model on here. So I use both these tools when coming up with my player pool each week. Um, you can go ahead and you can favorite some of your play, favorite plays on here as well. And then what you can do with that is either you can go and check out um, ownership projections or you can just jump right into the lineup generator um, which can help you create up to, I believe it's like 100 lineups so that you can just quickly throw over and, and throw in FanDuel or DraftKings. So keep that in mind as well fantasynationalgolfclub.com get over there sign up you will not be disappointed and then the other place i love using uh this is a free site futurefantasy.com go up to fantasy golf and act here and each week go in and choose the tournament uh, so this week we've got waste management phoenix open once we get in there we've got a ton of course details um he breaks it down by you know you can look at driver heavy courses performance in the west overseeded bermuda easy to hit greens these are all like narratives uh each week for each event that you can go and look at rankings for players um, we've got previous winners what i like to use here is i like to go over um, quotes from players over the last you know he's got as you can see here absolutely a ton um, going back to 2015 going to 2014 and look at some of the just what what do the players say about the course gives you a real good insight of what um, you're going to be looking for like Bubba Watson talks about the course um, it's always in perfect shape you can play out of the rough here so he's not worried about it it's kind of a course for him because you can just bomb it put it in the rough wedge it onto the green uh, very receptive greens even out of the rough I can hit some of the high shots and get them to stop on the greens so that just gives me some insight right there that I'm not really worried about driving accuracy so much because the rough is not as penal so that's just some stuff that you can draw out of there so awesome to get over to futurefantasy.com as well so let's jump into a few of the picks. Just want to give you a couple of my core picks, and you can find those on my sheet 
um, down here in the bottom tab. So I already went through, you can look at tournament scoring stats, last five years results. We've got the course, just kind of a snapshot of the course here. And then we've got targets and bets. So these are some of the plays I'm looking at. We've got DraftKings and FanDuel Seller. I label whether I like them in any format. Cash games, GPP, I list some outright bets here. As you can see, Ricky Fowler right up there. I got him a 21 to 1, betting him outright this week. Now, he's the first player I'm going to talk about on my sheet. And what first stood out to me is not only is he a talented player, we know that. I talked about him. He's top 20 in all four categories here. So that stands out. He's seventh in my overall model this week. But he comes in with some excellent course history. Um, T11 last year, T4, T2, made the cut in 2015. So he's only gotten better at this course. Now, his form was, was going really good. T66 last week. But what I want to point out to you with Ricky Fowler is he hasn't always been great at the Farmers Insurance Open. He was early in his career. Lately, he's struggled. And as you can see um, here, looking at the box score, is you know he barely made the cut last week and then kind of went one or sorry two over two over on saturday sunday and finished with a minus one t66 doesn't really stand out not great for him some people might avoid him for that i don't think so i think he's going to be pretty chalky this week but what stands out as we go look at last year missed the cut at the farmers insurance open turned around the next week t11 at the waste management phoenix open 2017 missed the cut at the farmers insurance open turned around the very next week T4 at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. 2016, missed the cut at the Farmers Insurance Open, turned around the next week, finished runner-up to Hideki Matsuyama um, at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. So I'm not really concerned that he finished T66 last week. He's coming to a course he's familiar with. He's had a lot of success. He fits the stats model um, as well. He's maybe a little bit down in that strokes gained approach right now, but he's 22nd off the tee. Um, he's a good putter as well. You start looking at some of the other shots. He's top 30 in proximity, but he's top 10 in par 4 scoring, 5th in par 5 birdie or better percentage on the sheet, ninth in birdie or better percentage overall. He's top 20 in bogey avoidance. So a lot of things stand out with him. He is going to be a core play for me, especially in cash games this week at 8th in salary on DraftKings, 7th in salary on FanDuel. I just think he makes a lot of sense. I could see another top 10. Um, with winning upside, that's why I'm going to place a bet of 21 to 1 on him this week. Another one that stands out, he's number one in my model. Um, this is going to be GPP only just because of the price. He's 500 more than Thomas, 400 more on FanDuel here. So he is the highest priced player. And with guys like Hideki Matsuyama, who comes back with, as you can see, he withdrew last year with a wrist injury, but before that, he was first. He won back to back tournaments here um, with the second and fourth the two years before that. He's coming off a third place finish. He's probably going to be the chalkiest player on the slate this week. He stands out from a statistical standpoint. So I think with players like Matsuyama, Woodland, Webb Simpson, um, Tony Finau, even he's always popular, Ricky Fowler in this top range. I think John Rahm is going to be a little bit lower owned this week just because of the price. Um, he has done well here. He's finished fifth. He was an amateur that year in 2015. And then T16, T11 the last two years. He comes in with tremendous form, 5th, 6th, and 8th in his last three tournaments. He has been a beast off the tee. We're just going to go here and look at Fantasy National again here for a minute. I've got this in. I'm going to go back to all courses, last 24 rounds. We're going to look at John Rahm here. He's 3rd in strokes gained total, 17th in strokes gained ball striking over the last 24 rounds. And with that ball striking, the, the approach shots have been down a little bit, but he is scoring, as you can see here, with DraftKings points. Um... And his off the tee game, he's gaining so many strokes off the tee right now, is absolutely crazy. And something that's new, I didn't mention with Fantasy Nationals, you can click on rounds gained. So not only are we looking at the rank, um, of he's third and off the tee, but how many rounds, so 91.7% of the time he is gaining strokes off the tee. Um, so that's something I like to look at as well. Kind of gives you a consistency um, when looking at players, especially for you know things like cash games and stuff like that. So, Rom, um, Ricky Fowler, I will have some Hideki Matsuyama. I'm not saying I won't, but in um, probably a little bit more leaning to him on the cash games. Being that he's probably going to be in that 20 to 30% owned in GPPs, I do like going to Rom. I think he's going to be more in that 15% range this week. Uh, I could be wrong there, but I do think just being that uh, those other guys are cheaper, have excellent course history as well, and form, I think Rom's going to be not overlooked i don't want to say that just a little bit lower owned. i think he makes a great gpp pivot he's got a ton of upside at this course 
Phil Mickelson stands out to me as well. He leads all golfers in this field in DraftKings Corner over the last five events. He's done very well here. Um, 5th, 16th, and 11th in his last three years after missing the cut in 2015. Comes in with some good form. He looked really good in his last event there as well. Um, we know he's good with his approaches. He may not rank as high on the sheet here, but we know he's good there. Um, good putter. He's good around the green. He kind of covers all the bases. Uh, second in par 4 score and 14th in par 5 birdie or better. So Phil Mickelson stands out there for me as well. Kind of jumping into the mid-tier. I do like um, like for GPP, something that I will look at sometimes when looking to avoid the chalk is go with a player who has maybe had success here in the past, um, but maybe not lately. So one that stands out to me is Bubba Watson. Would never consider using him in cash games. He's coming off a missed cut. He T40 here last year, missed the cut in 2017. But as you can see, he's had a lot of success here. Runner-ups in back-to-back years in 2014 and 15. T15 in 2016 there as well. So he has had success here, but he may be overlooked with some of the other guys in this range um, coming in. We got I talked about Bjorn Hanan, uh, Ches Reeve. He's a, a guy that's going to be fairly heavily owned as well. He's just been very consistent. And he's coming off of three straight years of outside of 70th finishes. Finished second last year, coming in with very consistent form. He's someone that I will be looking at in cash games. But for GPPs, I love pivoting to Bubba Watson up here. Um, just because you know a lot of people may look away because either he's not scoring DraftKings points lately, he hasn't had the greatest success here lately, and he's coming off a missed cut. So that's kind of like three strikes against him. He's going to be low-owned, but he's got a ton of upside. So definitely going to be looking at him this week in the mid-range. I mentioned Cameron Champ. I'm um, not looking at, you know, driving accuracy, but looking at distance. He has a ton of distance. Uh, I'll slide over and have a look at that here. Average is almost 320 yards off the tee. 60% driving accuracy. I mean, that's not terrible. Um, that's not great either. But here, like I said, driving accuracy maybe not as important. He's got a ton of upside. People may be getting, um, you know, I don't want to say sick of him, but, you know, maybe sick of rostering him. He was on a hot, hot run to start the season, including a win but he has missed two straight cuts now so people may be getting off the bandwagon he may be a little bit lower owned this week so that's something we maybe want to be looking at uh, from a gpp standpoint there as well daniel berger um showing up this week i just want to go jump to him on pga tour.com player card um jump to the results here you know he he jumped into the Desert Classic first run of the year. All four rounds under 70. Finished T12 at minus 17. Looked great. Farmers Insurance Open. Turned around. Struggled in the first round of the 75. Bounced back with a 69. 300 in the second round. But it wasn't enough to make the cut. I do like seeing that trend um, coming off a bad round. Um, and even though he did miss the cut, I, you know, as you can see here, he's got uh, 11th place finisher better in three of his last four years. So he's someone that um, stands out for me as a GPP pick. This week, overall weighted ranking, he's right there in 23rd, um, despite not great form on the sheet. Because a lot of this form, um, like the 35th, 15th, and 150th, that's going to go back into last season. So keep that in mind. That's why I like looking at player cards just to see what their sample size has been um, so far this season, especially early in the season. As we move in, it's not going to be that big a deal. Moving down the list a little bit, Ryan Palmer stands out. He's missed the cut here in his last two years. He's shown some upside lately, so he's had some good form, some high finishes. Um, he's had some high finishes here in the past, but he's missed two straight cuts here. Another GPP candidate for me this week, someone that I'm going to be looking at. Martin Laird, always GPP only for me. He's had some top 10 finishes in three of his last four here. He's had some you know, pretty poor form coming in, but again, that's what I look for for GPP. Um, you know, one or the other, uh, people are going to be kind of, you know, he's probably in that 5 to 8% range this week in that 7,600 range on DraftKings, 9,900 on FanDuel. So he's a little bit better of a play over here on DraftKings this week, but definitely looking at him. Emiliano Grillo always shows up um, mostly as a cash game play. He hasn't shown a lot of upside here, but he has made the cut in, in all three of his trips. And we'll just go look at his card here. But he's just a consistent cut maker on tour. Um, makes sense for cash games in that mid-7 range. Hasn't missed a cut so far this year. He's got a, a runner-up finish, top 10 and 4, top 25 so far. So definitely paying attention to him in cash games at 7,600. A little bit more on DraftKings than FanDuel. But again, with the FanDuel, the pricing is a little bit more. So it's still not too bad of a price given that he is 20th in odds this week to win. 
So we're going to go down a little bit more. Scott Piercy more or less shows up because of he's got some pretty good form. Um, you know, he's not missing cuts. He shows up when looking at the stats model. He hasn't had a ton of success here in the past. So I'm not looking, you know, he shows up in my overall weighted rankings, but he's someone that I'm maybe not looking to. I may have, if I'm running my, you know, 20 max, I'll maybe have him in one, maybe two of my GPP lineups this week. Brendan Steele is a player I will be fading this week. He's got tremendous course history. So for those guys that are, you know, making their models off course history, he's going to pop a ton, especially at 7,400 on DraftKings. I'm guessing he's probably not, because of the form, I'm guessing he's probably not going to be 15% owned, but 10% owned at that 7,400 range. I'm willing to pivot away from him, um, that course history, because of the poor form, and go with uh, you know some other players. I definitely like uh, Siwoo Kim this week a little bit as a pivot. Uh, he's been scoring lately. He hasn't had the greatest of success here, and I think that may keep people off him. Um, as well so I'm not so much sold on course history versus form or form versus course history I like to look at both and trying to come up with a formula I want a player that's maybe playing well had some success at the course and that's what I look at for cash games for GPPs it you know it's a completely different formula that you're looking at when trying to pivot off of high owned plays um, so definitely don't just X a player off just because he's got bad course history because you can have bad course history until you have good course history. You can have good course history until you have bad course history. Perfect example, I talked about Ricky Fowler at the Farmers Insurance Open. Started out early in his career, um, did very well at the Farmers Insurance Open, and in his last four or five years has been just horrendous at the Farmers Insurance Open. So it can flip when it comes to course history. It's a very small sample size looking at course history because you only play that course once an entire season. Um, so definitely, I like looking at it as a complete formula, not just one or the other. So. With that, uh, jumping down a little bit, uh, another player that stands out to me this week, especially in cash games, is going to be Lucas Glover. He's made three straight cuts here, and he's just been absolutely on fire so far this season when it comes to ball striking, when it comes to making cuts, and not just making cuts. He's getting high finishes as well. We'll go look at his season here. He started with the Safeway, T17, T14, T7, T11, T12. No finish in his first five events this year of T17 or better. He shot under 70 in four straight, or sorry, eight straight in 10 of his last 12 rounds. And he's very cheap and he doesn't miss cuts here um, at this event. So he's top 20 in my overall ranks. He at 7,200, especially on DraftKings, is almost a lock for me in cash games. Um, GPPs, I think we can maybe go away a little bit as well. I will have him in some of my GPPs, but not as much. Um, he's gonna be 100% for me in cash games. JJ Spawn, he withdrew here last year but finished as the top five the year before that. Um, he's been missing some cuts lately after some solid form before that. So he's going to be a GPP pivot for me, kind of off that in you know that, that Glover range as well. Chesson Hadley, I may have a very low amount of him. He got a top five here last year, but again, absolutely terrible form coming in. But he does have upside, and when guys have top 10 upside and they're in that 7,000 range, they've had success at a course before, they definitely um, show up on my radar and make sense for, for GPPs as well. Bo Hostler, 33 in my overall weighted rankings this week. Top 20 here last year. He's had some up and down form as well, but he has shown some upside. You know, top 20 at 7,100 I will definitely take. I would say he's got top 10 upside as well, and at that price definitely makes a ton of sense. Again, looking at the prices, he's a lot better play on DraftKings than FanDuel. 52nd in DraftKings pricing, 32nd in FanDuel pricing. So definitely be looking at that. I'm not going too much lower than that. I think another chalky play this week, and I actually will be considering him for cash games, is Joel Dahman. I'm just going to bring up his player card here as well. He's someone I talked about a bit last year as well in my articles. Um, a cash play towards the end of the season. You know, he started out a little inconsistent, missing cuts. Um, missed his last two cuts in the playoffs there but he had some stretches where he was very consistent shooting in the 70s top 10 upside so he showed some upside and at 6800 that makes sense looking at the stats model he's 25th off the tee 46th on the approach which is top 40 when looking at ball striking coming in he the form is trending is what really stands out he's coming off 69th 41st 37th 22nd 9th so he's gotten better every single week so i do think he's got top 10 top 20 upside this week um, I think he's consistent. He's definitely consistent so far this season. We'll look at his 2019 start. 
He's played eight events so far. He's made the cut and all. And like I said, he's trending up into that top 10 area, which I like to see. I don't necessarily think he's top 10 material this week, but top 20 under 7K on DraftKings is a perfect choice to get in your cash games to help you get to um, maybe a little bit more of a Stars and Scrubs approach this week. Um, you know, if you want to put a Ricky Fowler, or Phil Mickelson together, you want to go Fowler, or Matsuyama, I think you can do that in cash with players like Dahman down in this uh, range for sure. And then not really looking at a ton of other guys in the lower ranges right now. I'm um, going to be looking a little bit more. Uh, Vaughn Taylor maybe he's coming off a top 10 finish. He's got some, some history here as well. Chris Kirk shows up in models all the time, but with his form, which has been absolutely atrocious lately, I'm definitely staying away from him. Although you see that sometimes with players will have terrible course history and all of a sudden pop at a course where they've had success before. So I wouldn't be surprised if he makes the cut this week, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he finishes like 140th, 100, or sorry, not 140th, there's only 132 players in the field, but like that 120 to 130 range. I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes near the bottom of the pack this week. So definitely not someone I'm going to be looking at. Uh, James Hahn down here, he hasn't had the greatest form Um most recently, he's got some top 30s in his, uh, you know, fourth and fifth last tournaments. He's got top 20s here before. So at 6,400, I guess if you want to combine you maybe three of the stud players at the top, I would consider him for GPP formats as well. So those are just some of the plays that I'm looking at this week. Um, this video is a little bit longer than what they're going to be each and every week, but I wanted to kind of go over some of the sources that I use uh, each and every week for my research, along with how I use my cheat sheet. Um, and then some of the plays, of course, as well, as well as breaking down the course. So if you have any questions, make sure to jump into the Roto Pros Slack chat, our community chat. Jump into PGA Talk. You can hit me up all the way to Lineup Lock, which is going to be tomorrow. I'll be around all night tonight uh, making lineups, um, getting the skeleton lineups together for FanDuel and DraftKings. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore Bombs 9. And this is where I list all of my cheats. I do cheat sheets for NHL, NBA, PGA, NASCAR, um mlb is coming up soon working on that so i got that coming got more and more videos coming um rob does a soccer video and then monday wednesday and friday we've got justin and josh they're doing nba breakdowns um both of them do nba articles as well we've got a lot going on at roto pros right now so make sure to get over to the community chat check that out uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video leave a comment below things you want to see in the video maybe things that uh you don't want to see in the video um, questions about golfers, pretty much anything at all. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great week and let's go get some green screens.